Greetings. I welcome you all to the eighth lecture of this course. And uh, in the previous lecture, we have uh, been beginning with pretreatment, followed by pyrometallurgical and electrometallurgical processes that can be used to help uh, in recycling the various wastes and uh, of course, now we are going to look at the hydrometallurgical route of materials recycling and uh, continuing on the idea of employing these extractive metallurgical principles for our benefit to understand and analyze and uh, enhance the material recovery from various wastes. So, now we are going to look at hydrometallurgical processes. What does that uh, actually mean? We are looking at extraction of metallic values into solution and recovering the products. Now, in electrometallurgical and pyrometallurgical system, the resultant product was normally metal unless until we are uh, trying to go into some other product, but usually it is metal. But in hydrometallurgical system, apart from metal itself, there could be different types of products based on, based on uh, what is the next process after hydrometallurgical processes. So, for instance, if the most important beginning step of any hydrometallurgical process is the leaching itself. Leaching is basically the selective dissolution of our raw feed and what we normally do is we choose an aqua solution and this aqua solution is going to leach, it is going to react with the raw feed and this aqua solution is chosen such that the raw material that we are trying to react it with the te reaction tendency should be in our favor. So, it could be acidic solution or alkaline solution or at times uh, even neutral solutions like water dissolution are also uh, taken as example of leaching. So, what we are trying to do here is we are trying to use an aqua solution that can react with the raw feed that we are interested in leaching and what we get is we will extract the metal because reaction is going to result in the extraction of metallic ions into the solution itself. Now, this is process is called leaching. After leaching, we can think of purification of leach liquor. So, purification of leach liquor would mean that the raw feed as multiple metallic values I would say and which would mean that if the leaching reagent can react with multiple metallic values the extraction of metallic ions into it would be pretty much observed. Multiple ions, so multiple ions are coming in. So, one has to now think of which particular metallic ion we are interested in extracting. So, that, that is the reason why we are, we need to purify the leach liquor. So, when we purify the leach liquor, basically we are trying to target, isolate that single particular type of metallic ion and it also means separation of impurities. So, when we are purifying, we are actually separating the impurities after which we can think of recovery of metal or as I have mentioned, not just metal, it could be metal rich or metal compounds, metal rich products, metal rich compounds. 
depending on what type of product we are interested in we can switch from recovering metal to uh, efficiently recovering metal compounds if metal compounds is the desired product again it it totally depends on what was the raw feed what was the leach liquor used how efficiently the purification of the leach liquor was conducted and what was the target or desired product if it is metal then one can think of the uh, adjusting the process accordingly similarly if it is metal compounds then a uh, different process could be used so now let's go further what exactly is leaching so let us just begin with this uh, small uh, reaction that we have written so we have a raw feed and again this raw feed could be uh, since we are thinking of uh, materials recovery we could we could just go into e waste electronic waste or metallurgical waste and of course we have already assumed that the pre treatment of the feed is performed and before that before the pre treatment itself again it is assumed that the sorting categorization is done because it will ensure in concentrating the raw feed so this ensures concentration of raw feed so assuming that we have such a raw feed we use an, an appropriate leaching reagent it depends upon what we are trying to make so it could be alkaline or acidic or neutral based on all of that we have our leaching reagent we choose the temperature the time and we normally get the leach liquor and the solid residue so we have the leach liquor and the solid residue the leach liquor is the solution with ions and the solid residue is of is basically the raw feed minus the metallic values that have been extracted into the solution itself so what it means is it will be separated after filtration so right now we are assuming that it has reacted and we have given it sufficient time for it to react and after that the separation is carried out by filtration so the leach liquor and the solid residues are separated now what are the important operation parameters that are essential in leaching step itself so we must have of course a vessel suitable vessel suitable reaction vessel that can accommodate that can accommodate the solution and feed and of course uh, other parameters that would be applicable for uh, the uh, leaching operations these are also taken care of in the suitable vessel what are the parameters that need to be varied for efficient material recovery so temperature we can have heating mechanisms or cooling mechanisms for uh, increasing or optimizing the uh, leaching efficiency the time duration how much contact time of raw feed with the leach liquor was provided what was the concentration of reagent it is normally understood that higher concentration of reagent would be more beneficial but that's not always the case 
supposing that we are increasingly uh, using co more concentrated reagents for uh, extracting some metallic value. It can also lead to the wastage of ions because there is, uh, there is only a limitation to which a metallic value can be extracted from the raw feed. As we had seen in, uh, in the previous lectures as well, there is a whatever process that we do, be it pretreatment process or recycling process or after this, be it refining process as well, the partition of metallic values in the product and byproduct is always going to be observed. It, it, it will be observed almost, almost all the time, which means there is a fair possibility that even after we are increasing the concentration of the leaching reagent, the metallic values may not be 100 percent leached. And what do we mean by leaching percentage? It basically means what was the concentration initially and what was the concentration achieved after leaching. So, for instance, if we have some grams of uh, metallic value in the raw feed, what was the uh, recovery after leaching? So, concentration in the solution upon the initial concentration initial and of course, the initial concentration is going to be a larger value. That is how we define the uh, percentage leaching. Concentration of reagent, indefinitely increasing leaching concentration reagent may not be a very good option. Of course, optimizing that is essential, but indefinitely increasing that is not a good option. Similarly, leads to solid to liquid ratio. What is the raw feed con, uh, quantity used with respect to the leach liquor volume? That is very important. And what is the agitation? What is the agitation of the solution? What it has been observed that agitating the solution using mechanical uh, paddles or electromagnetic stirrers and such helps in improving the leaching efficiency. Types of leaching, types of leaching. So, of course, there are various types and categories of leaching based on the type of uh, 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 leaching reagent used, uh, the reaction vessels used, batch type reactors or uh, the various types of categorizations can be provided, but we will begin with a simple classification based on the type of the leaching reagent used. So, acidic leaching and alkaline leaching and of course, there is the neutral leaching which is basically using a P neutral pH solution, preferably it is water leaching and one must usually ensure that the pH of the water is as close as possible to 7. So, such leaching have been described in literature. Acidic leaching is basically utilization of an acid to recover metallic values from a given raw feed. So, suppose that we have ZNO, ZNO is our raw material and we added H2SO4 and of course, uh, under the required temperature conditions and agitation, we get ZNSO4 in the solution and, and water. So, this is basically in the solution or it could be uh, written as AQZNSO4. This uses H2SO4 as a raw material. We can also have other re, uh, acidic solutions like HCl, HNO3 and so on and so forth. So, when we have an acid reacting with a raw feed, so one has to identify here itself, this is the raw feed. Similarly, instead of ZNO or Al2O3 that we are going to see in the next example, we can have some sort of e-waste or metallurgical waste
and we can have a variety of reagents here H2SO4, HCl, HNO3 based upon which, which reagent would react with our raw feed and then the desired product would be formed product and of course the byproduct. Similarly, when we look at alkaline solutions, we have let us say again the raw feed is Al2O3 and we have NaOH as the reagent and again similarly we can think of KOH as uh, an alternative to NaOH, sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide and so on and so forth. Al2O3 is our raw feed for uh, alkaline solutions, what we get is 2 NaAlO2 and water. Again, this is going into the solution and we are able to extract the metallic values from alumina or ZnO in both of these cases and bring this metallic content into the solution. So, it is possible to extract metallic values into the solution by leaching, but what happens after that? So, the first step of hydrometallurgy is taken care of. You take the raw material, again we assume that it is sorted, classified, characterized and pre-treated. It has let us say smaller particle size, so that the reaction itself with the leaching reagents is more dynamic, it is more easily taken care of. After that, we have the leach liquor. What do we do with the leach liquor? Because again, we are, we as uh, recyclers, we are interested in products that are solid and that are easier to carry. So, leach liquor contains the metallic values, but we would be interested in extracting the metal or metal compounds. So, let us just discuss some of the possible uh, next steps in hydrometallurgical processes that are essential for metallic values. One of them, uh, these are basically ion exchange, solvent extraction, cementation because we are again interested in recovery of metallic values, ion exchange, solvent extraction and cementation. Ion exchange means we have a column with small hard porous beads. So, we have porous beads of solid resins. These resins are such are chemically such designed in such a way that they are able to extract, absorb the metallic ions of our choice. So, the desired metal is absorbed on the solid resins and since it is absorbed on the solid resins, it can be recovered back. So, the ion exchange on the solid porous beads is possible, which is why this, this process is called ion exchange. Size and valency of ions are of immense importance while we think of ion exchange. Concentration of ions in the solution, it should have some minimum quantity of ions in the solution that we are trying to extract, the temperature of the process and physical and chemical nature of the resins and uh, the, the ions that we are thinking of in the solution, these should be compatible. Based on that, we should be able to extract the metallic ions through ion exchange. The second process that we, we will quickly cover is the solvent extraction. So, we have this schematic diagram where we have aqueous solution and organic solvents and organic solvents and aqueous solutions. We will begin with this part of the diagram. This is the leach liquor that contains multiple ions. Of course, we have multiple ions here and we take this aqueous solution and we bring an organic solvent extraction, extractant in contact with it and maintain the pH and temperature such that the metallic ions that we are interested in are preferentially separated into the organic phase. So, metallic ions preferentially get taken up into the organic phase 
and then we separate it out. So, aqueous and organic phases are separated. We prepare a separate aqueous phase which, which could be a different uh, solution altogether. And since this loaded organic phase is what we have, we bring this loaded organic phase in contact with the aqueous solution which is freshly prepared. So, now what happens the particular metal ion that is present in the loaded organic phase will get discharged into the aqueous phase. So, the organic phase gets unloaded here. This is basically unloading. Unloading of metallic ions from the organic phase to the next aqueous phase and this solution could be used for further processing. Now, one might want to wonder we are we are moving from an aqueous phase to an aqueous phase in between there is that organic phase. Why is it so uh, special? We are able to selectively remove our metal of choice from this mixture of solution, mixture, uh, mixture of ions and bring it into an aqueous phase that has the particular metal ion itself. So, moving from uh, a leach liquor that contains multiple ions to an aqueous solution that has the single or desired metal ion. It, the advantages of this processes are we can have of we can think of reutilization of organic solvents again since it is unloaded we can reuse it. This selective recovery of metals is possible from where from of course the leach liquor because it contains multiple ions. Temperature and pH are very important for such uh, operations because organic solvents the interaction of leach liquor with the organic solvent and the organic solvent with the next aqueous solution is dependent on the pH and the temperature. Cementation, one of the most important uh, methods for uh, recovering metals from leach liquor is cementation. What, uh, what the name normally suggests is basically it is producing cement like products. Cement like products, I mean it feels like cement like powder. When we recover the metallic values from uh, the leach liquor using cementation, it is the cement like product. The temperature, agitation are important parameters in cementation. And what normally happens is basically uh, we will take an example of uh, iron and uh, copper sulphate solution. So, suppose that we have a leach liquor of CuSO4 and we inserted in it a disc of iron with iron and we have maintained the temperature and agitation such that the reaction between CuSO4 and iron is taking place. So, what normally would happen here is iron would lead to the removal of uh, at certain sp uh, spots in iron, the iron would be discharged as iron Fe2 plus iron ions and Cu2 plus from the solution of CuSO4 would get deposited onto the plate itself, onto the iron disc. So, the overall reaction that has been uh, described is Fe plus CuSO4, of course, this is from aqua solution, gives us copper. See, iron is getting iron is getting uh, transported as FeSO4 into the solution, but the main target is basically copper and this copper produced on the iron disc is 
of cement like texture. So, the anodic and the cathodic reactions are described. Iron with gives us 2 Fe 2 plus plus 2 electrons and this 2 electrons are again used for uh, uh, the deposition of copper. Cu 2 plus plus 2 electrons gives us copper at the cathode. So, what we see here is the recovery of copper from the solution on iron plate, but essentially we are also losing iron from the iron disk itself and the iron is getting uh, collected into the leach liquor solution. There are multiple other methods by which we can uh, recover valuable products from leach liquor. So, for instance, we can think of precipitation or crystallization. These methods are also uh, important for uh, recovering uh, metal compounds actually. In this lecture, we have seen the uh, use of leaching and the leach liquor and we are now able to think of uh, methods of utilizing the leach liquor to the advantage of uh, of basically recovering the metal or metallic compounds. Now, in the upcoming lectures, we will be discussing the refining strategies and utilizing these processes of all routes of pyrometallurgy, electrometallurgy, hydrometallurgy and uh, of course, the pretreatments, uh, the concepts that we had learned, the pretreatment and the concepts that we will be covering in the upcoming classes, refining strategies. We will utilize these concepts in producing uh, the desired product from the raw feed and the raw feed could be ranging from any type of waste, both in electronic waste and metallurgical waste. The aim of any recycling process involves the efficient recovery of metals and metallic values in, in, in of course, in the metallic form or in the compound form and it should benefit the environment. So, selection of, re, of the process itself is of immense importance. We will be discussing this further in the upcoming classes. Thank you.